Hey. Go on, right then, Joel. Is it up? Um, I haven't seen it yet, but whenever I go live, it, it does it instantly. So I'd imagine I can't see it on my phone. It's coming up. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we're just checking that we are live on Facebook before we start. Yes, we are. I can see ourselves. You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. So, so in four minutes, it's probably going to cut out. Uh, it's basically the order of service. That seems, Weird, to, isn't it? seems to what happens on my um on my last few lives. Let me just uh, have a quick look. I'll pull it up in the background so I can see it because I can see the comments. So is things going well for you during lockdown then? There we go. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's different. Do you know what I mean? It's so so different. So let me let me just let me just connect with people so I actually know what the hell's going oh, on. Oh yeah. Have a clue. So, um, if you've just jumped on, this is a really impromptu kind of thing. This is uh, Ben, who's there. We've jumped onto the Zoom call and just posted it live onto my page. Ben is somebody that I went to school with, um, so I've known him for a number of years. Probably haven't spoken to him for, I guess, maybe fifteen years or so. Eh? 15 Long years. time. Yeah, could have been. Could have been. Yeah. And then we reconnected through different bits we were doing, um, and stuff like that. And we just, yeah, we have various different conversations and we're having one tonight that's live. I've actually called it the business meeting because this is something I'm desperately, desperately keen to do, which I said to you about last time, which is basically nothing more than like a podcast or live interviews and such like that with different people talking about uh, businesses and, and different people in different stages, whether they're, you know, they're Richard Branson's of this world, or whether they're literally thinking about, I'd like to do it, but I don't know where I am. The idea of the business yeah. is just to have those kind of conversations with people and just see sort of where they're going. So, well, first, let me tell people, so Joel what? Campbell, I, I like to compete in my mind with Joel <laughs> Campbell, because if I get to like eight, nine, 10 in the evening, and I think to myself, oh, Joel's still working, I'm going to keep going. And uh, we got this little game going on where I try and work as long as I can just to try and beat Joel. Um, we're not really keeping score in any kind of way, but maybe we should. Yeah, yeah. It is hard because I, like I say, I took the last, I think the last 10 days, seven to 10 days, I, I haven't been working really um, uh, from last week because we'd just been doing stuff in the garden. So we had a digger in and various bits and pieces. So, um, but this week I got back to it. As I said to you on Monday, I got yeah. back to it on Monday and it's just been, yeah, full throttle back on it. So, um, how many hours do you work on a normal day? Before COVID 19. Hmm. Um, I would I would generally do somewhere between ninety and one hundred hours a week. So what's uh, that? That's that, that's that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like almost every waking hour. Getting that's that that's thing. first thing in the morning to last thing at night. Yeah, but look, you, you'll appreciate this because we, you, you'll, you'll get this when you when you're an entrepreneur. Um, and I, I don't mean an entrepreneur because it's just cool and it's faddy. Like you're actually an entrepreneur when you when you're when your bread is an entrepreneur and that's what you live and breathe and do you're always working because you never switch off. Even when we go like on holiday. So we go away for two weeks a year and we just switch off from work, turn off emails and stuff like that, best we can. But I'll sit there in the restaurants and I'll be looking at it. I'll be like, oh, look how they're doing their service. And I'll start to think about how we could improve what we do based on what other people are doing. And then uh, my my wife, Emma, will get really annoyed with me because what will happen is people will come over and they'll they'll be taking our orders. And I'm like, you're you're, you're doing everything on your your tablet, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, what system are you using? And I, and I want to know all the ins and outs. So I never yeah. actually really turn off. And when we go out to attractions, museums, we went to Harry Potter World. And I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan. But I loved it because I was just like, wow, look at the way they've done this and yeah. engaged in. So you never really turn off. So in that instance, you're kind of always working. Yeah, totally. When you enjoy what you do, the, the, the line between work and everything else kind of blurs, doesn't it? It's, it all becomes one thing, which is good, I think. I mean, I would, I would say it's, it's a it's a lifestyle, yeah, than a job, and that's the that's the big difference. It's sometimes people that don't people that aren't self employed sometimes find it difficult to understand that, don't they? Because you know, it's like like you say, it, it never ends. Life and work and everything just becomes one thing in a way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I did. Um, I, I was posting my story this morning on Instagram, and um, I, I must have been doing like fifty different things at once. Literally, lots of little jobs. I've got a few massive jobs I need to do, but I've got loads of little jobs, and I just. I absolutely love just nailing off all those little jobs and just bang, 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 how it goes. It's just, it's that busyness and it's kind of that bustle and it's that constant, just, just flowing and keeping it going because it keeps you, it, it, I find it keeps me sharp and it keeps me on top of things and I like it. And that's what I've really disliked about lockdown is I've had so much time to just think. Mm-hmm. And actually for me, I'm kind of, I, I think much quicker on the spot. For me, it's kind of, I'm much more dynamic than that. 
So I don't like to sit down and strategize and plan too much. I've got directors and managers that do that really, really well, like far better than I do it. So what I like to do is throw ideas at them, throw different concepts at them, challenge kind of what they're doing, give them a, a different direction, a different way of thinking about it and do what entrepreneurs do, which is innovate and think very much outside the box and think differently. Um, and then I leave them to st strategize and plan and kind of work out all the detailing and then implement. right cool you've got it good haven't you like how long have you how long have you been in that position where you've got team members that you can sort of delegate stuff to and they go and take care of it um i don't know i, I, I do you know what? i've got i've got people who have been with me for like five years that can do that but i guess it's probably been in the last um six months maybe yeah, from kind of like November, and actually, it's, yeah, probably probably November is a really good changing point for us when I came back from holiday because we really understood not just me but also my senior team and also the the, the rest of the guys. Um, we really understood what our business was, what we were doing, how to do it, how to do it really well, um, how to drive everything forwards, and we were in a position financially where we could afford to start really plowing in. Good are we amount. talking about the prison now or are we yeah. talking about the whole group okay well the whole group because they all fit together there at the moment they're still what happens to one still does affect the others um so they are still interlinked in that sense um but yeah probably in the last six months and i and i changed the way the structure was so i've got a marketing director a sales and marketing director that runs the sales and marketing teams so and then she's got somebody that works specifically in sales somebody that works specifically in um content design social media um, and stuff like that. And then uh, I've got the operations team. So there's an operations director and she's got two managers underneath her that run the actual prisons. And then they've got all the staff that run in day to day. And then I've got a finance manager who deals with the finance and the admin and our HR manager is actually off at the moment. And she's probably, they're all really key in their own parts, but the HR manager is really crucial because she will be the piece that kind of connects all the employees from the bottom to the top together. Um, and make sure that, you know, that whole ethos and, and it, it, everyone's connected. So it's not like an, in, it, it's not a very traditional company in the same way as you would um, normally get in terms of blue collar. It's not like that. Um, you can see what is it that motivates you to do all this? Cause like be, once you get beyond the point where your bills are paid and your family's taken care of and you're comfortable and all that kind of thing, like what is it in you that is um, uh, driven to, do more and create more what is that i like um and i put it up the other day actually when i found my wife my, one of my big things is i like helping other people kind of grow mm -hmm. and I, and i always i i, I try and I, th I think everything i do reflects back to a time in my life and experience i've been through and i know that when i started my first company if i'd had somebody that i could just turn to and say what do i do here how do I do this? Where, where do I go from here? How, what, what, what do I do? So um, go into a bit more detail, because I know you've told me a bit of this story in the past, but there's people listening might not know. So d dig into it a little bit. What happened? Do you know what? They, they still happen now. It's, and it's the same for everybody. You, you come up against something and you have to make a decision. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't know. And the, and the idea of being able to ask somebody that's been through it and done it and has got the answers makes a huge difference um yes yeah, yeah, sandra hello i did say about the csas i didn't name csas but i did say about csa so one of my one of my one of our team has jumped in so don't forget to mention these guys um what does they're, csa they're, mean they're, they're they're customer sales advisors so effectively oh, okay. they are the people at the front line that deal directly with the customers as you walk through the door they're the first face you see okay um, and they're the ones that deal with all your transactions and they are of gold dust because they're the ones that have the face-to-face -face, um, come on tell us the whole story about what happened and all that Oh, there's various things. Do you know what? When, I, when my first company, so with with Step Success, I remember that I wasn't sure how to market. I had no idea about social media. I didn't use social media back then at all myself. I just I was like, I'm not going to use social media. I had no idea about it. I had no idea about marketing. I had no idea about PR at all. I built a product that was completely corporate designed. It was designed for mass populations in a corporate environment. And I sat and my, my business partner at the time persuaded me to go to a PR meeting because he said, that's how we're going to get it out. We'll get it into magazines and people will buy it and we'll get loads of business. And that's how it's done. 
Mm. So I went to, so, so I did that. And the PR company basically pitched me to say, you need to, we'll get you into loads of consumer magazines. Um, and I remember sitting at home and the PR company had, had pitched me this, this concept and it was 10 grand their, their, their costs. And basically they were going to do this amazing consumer driven piece for our product. Cause it was cool and it was funky and they were like, it was sell. It's like, okay. And I remember at the time just going, things myself going, I don't know about this because it's 10 grand, which is a lot of money and they're going to sell a product we don't have. So then we're going to have to build it. And, and I don't really know what's the right way to go. That seems a bit backward, doesn't it? So what, they were going to build brand awareness before you had the product to sell. Yeah, we had a product, but it was, it belonged to a different market. So ultimately I made the mistake. I made so many mistakes in that company. Um, but I made the mistake of I, 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 I went with it. I went with a business partner. I went with what I, what I thought might be the best idea, which was a paid 10 grand to the PR company. They put us in loads of different magazines. They did well in those different magazines. Um, I think we sold five, like literally 10 grand. We sold five. So that was a good return, two grand a piece. Um, and uh, I mean, these are units that were like 60 quid. So it was, right. it was a huge loss. Um, yeah. And we were selling a product we didn't have. And it just took so much attention for me away from what we should have been doing which was in the corporate world um and that was a massive failure and had i had somebody i could turn around to and go because I, I i felt uneasy about it I, my gut feeling was like there was something wrong here but i wasn't sure what to do and had i had somebody i could just picked up the phone and said what do i do here because if i could talk to my 26 year old self now that was 10 years ago i'd be like don't do this it's not in your market it's crazy you spent 10 grand is mental and because of that, I didn't use a PR company for eight years. I was like, PR is crap, PR is shit. Oh, sorry. Um, PR is rubbish. Um, never use PR. And it wasn't until we connected with a really, really good PR company, a company called Zen Communications, that we that we still work with now. Um, and they showed me how it should be done right. Um, so right. yeah, that was, that was that. But there's, there's a ton of things like that. Loads of things about, you know, day to day. Um, I was having one the other day with a finance director about how we should manage overtime and various different bits and pieces. Um, it's nice to be able to have that call to be able to say, hey, what should we do here? Um, and that's, I really enjoyed doing that. So that's part of what the business incubation hub's all about um, because people think invest, investing in businesses is all about giving them money. So if you came up with a business idea, for example, or someone comes up with a business idea, their initial thing is I need money. Um, and they don't. And I proved that with the jails. I started the jails with £80,000 of debt. I literally had to borrow money to be able to drive from Sh Somerset to Shrewsbury to pick up the keys. Oh, um, man. Seven, Tell me that. Account. That's like, nuts. Go, just go into more detail on that. that like, so, just... so I, agree, I agree the deal. I had, I had 80, I think it was £82,000 worth of debt. I had £1.57 in my bank account. My wife and I, we had um, a young child um no we must have two young two young children um and we were living off pasta because we couldn't afford to, to pasta and pesto pasta and pesto pesto if we were lucky i can remember one of the really low points for me was we had i think 72 pounds in tesco's vouchers and we went to tesco's and we were shopping in tesco's and we were adding everything up to make sure we got to the 72 pounds because we only had like i think we had one pound 80 or something like that in our bank account and we got there and we'd gone just under 72 quid. Uh, it was, I don't know, 71, 60 something. And I went to pay and the lady was like, oh, no, you can't pay with 72 pounds of vouchers because I can't give you any change. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't need change. Just take it out and don't, don't worry about it. She's like, no, I can't do that. So I can only take 71 pounds in vouchers and you'll have to pay the rest in cash. And there was this queue behind me and I was like, I don't have like 65p in cash. I literally don't, I just don't fucking have it. Um, and I was, and I, I can just remember the feeling of all these people just waiting for me to pay and just going like, how am I going to pay for 65p? Am I, am I going to have to be that person that then chooses something to go back? And then suddenly I realized if I choose something to go back, I'm going to be in the same issue again, just at 70 pounds, not 71. And, and, and eventually I, I, I paid and I managed to get, I think the, the old pence on my card and it took me down to one pound 57 in my bank. So that was literally it. What year was that? That was 2015. To all the people that work for you know all this? Yeah, mo yeah, most of them. It's not a secret. Um, a lot of people won't have, have heard it, but it's not, it's not a secret. It's, it's, in, it's in the book that I'm writing. I'm, I'm very you know, open to say that when I took over the prison, I had all of that debt. 
Um, and it was all for my previous company. It was all built up for my previous company. I made so many mistakes in four years. And you borrowed the money to tell that bit, to uh, drive to the prison. So yeah, so, so basically I, I, I structured a deal over the phone and through a, through a meeting because the, the guy that owned the prison lived locally, lived in Bath, so I was able to get to him. I met with him, structured a deal, agreed a deal. Um, so that meant I was liable for the rent, I was liable for the business insurance, I was liable for um, the staff thing, all, all the costs that would come with it. And I think the first month's costs were about 12, 12 and a half grand. Um, and I had no money and I couldn't, and when, he, when we agreed it, um, I couldn't, I didn't even have the petrol or the money to, to get up to Shrewsbury. So I borrowed the money off my dad um, to put petrol in the car, drove up to Shrewsbury to collect the keys. Um, and then when I had the keys, I was like, right, okay, we're doing this. Um, we put a Wix website together, which I think cost us like six, seven pounds, something like that to, to just put up. Um, so we did that. I put, um, we used PayPal, so we didn't have to pay for that and, uh, and an integration piece to be able to sell the tickets. Put the tickets online we announced that we were doing it spoke to the local media they put it up on facebook um and then within the first i think within the first 12 12 hours i think we did about fifteen thousand pounds worth of tickets or in the first in the first two or three hours we did fifteen thousand pounds worth of tickets and we just literally i sat there and just went ching 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 i was like well that's the staff paid that's the rent paid that's the bills paid that's this paid that's this paid um and i was just like well this might actually be okay and then he got and then PayPal contacted me, they froze our account because they were seeing lots of transactions of 15 pounds and 30 pounds coming in for single and double tickets. And they thought it was a fraudulent account because it had just been set up. And within a couple of hours, I had like 15 grand in there. So <laughs> PayPal, PayPal froze the account. They still took money, but they wouldn't let us have any money. Um, so I had all this money I couldn't access. Um, so yeah, and eventually that, that, I, had to do that. I had to go through EU regulations, funny enough, to, to get access to it. What does that mean? Uh, PayPal had a thing where we had to prove that we were UK citizens, prove we had the company, and then there was an EU regulation we had to go through um, just to basically prove that we were a, a new company and it would allow them to up our limit so we could withdraw more than £100 at a time. So I needed this money to pay the bloody bills. Um, and yeah, and it, and it went from there. And I think at the end of the first quarter, I think the VAT bill was like 30 grand, And I was, that's just the VAT bill. Um, and I can remember being able to pay it and just being like so happy that I was able to pay the bills and pay the staff. And we, and we weren't downhill from there. We did go downhill for, you know, probably a good year or so when we hit the winter and it was, it was hard. It was really tough. But when you've got like four people working in a company, it's much easier to make the costs in the first instance. Um, and we've had a few close calls in the prison still of, of you know, will we survive, won't we survive? Uh, lots of things that haven't gone our way. And lots of things that have and you just persevere and persevere and persevere and, and really what you do over the first couple of years is you learn how to run your business that's why business people are never successful first or second or even third time out because they have to learn um that's why you fall over when you learn to walk right you you have to learn it um so yeah so we've done that and and now we we know our business so so now it starts to fly and yeah and it's it's, it's been going well and then COVID 19 obviously hit um, right but yeah it, it took us uh it was last year wasn't it we cleared our debt sorry my wife sat over over the stuff for me but yeah it was 2019 uh we paid off the last of our debt um so yeah i think we, we made the last payment like 22 grand or something like that wow but we've been we've been paying off bit by bit by bit by bit by bit um, wow the whole way so yeah so what's the book then tell me about that it's just it's just a book just about um I might, I might change it a little bit. The idea was originally I'll just be a biography from, you know, start to where I am now. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, because parts of it are quite boring, is I might just chop it up and just do the prison years, just do the, the bit about taking over the jail and all the things that have happened from when I took the prison to, to kind of now. Mm. Or I might do the worst out of my first company. So what's the aim of the book? Um, like, um... Just to tell the story. Yeah. So people it's it's foc mainly focused on the prison, is it? Yeah, well, it's focused on the, the developing and the building of the businesses and the building of the brand and kind of everything that comes with it. It's not a specific kind of read this and you'll understand this or know this. It's just for people to be able to, to, to learn more about it. There's a lot of people that are quite interested in what we do in the jails. It's quite unique. Mm. Um, it's a fascinating story. There's some, there's some lovely stories and some lovely anecdotes in there in terms of things that have happened. Um, 
so yeah and, and there is the reality of how you know all the troubles and things we've been through because everyone just sees the success now like that's why that's why i try and do videos in a certain way i don't do too many videos outside you see the walls that are like plaster that need doing. i don't think you should ever plaster that it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of iconic <laughs> I'll now plaster isn't it? It, i'll paint it back in <laughs> yeah um, yeah but yeah the, re the reality is you know we've, 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 we're quite comfortable now um and i was speaking to someone the other day and I, it was i think i told you but it was it was right at the beginning of lockdown somebody was saying to me about um uh, how this is a great leveler and I just called him out. I was like, that's such rubbish, man. This is, this is not a good level. And I like, no, because everyone's going through it together. So, you know, it was sort of the, the kind of the weak from the, from the strong. And it's, it's, it's a good leveling point. I was like, it's not because some people are worried about how they're going to pay their bills. They literally don't have money to pay their bills. Other people are in high rise flats with, you know, two or three kids in kind of one or two rooms. Um, and I said, you know, my biggest concern or my biggest worry right now is whether I'll run out of like salmon and avocados. I was like, that's, that's not the same as other people. Um, and other people are, are much better, much more comfortable. So I was like, it's not a great level at all. And I think that's the, um, those, those are kind of things. I like, I guess, background to the point where we started was one of the things that drives me is I like helping people to achieve what they want to achieve. And I, I really enjoy working with a lot of the, the team we have um, that want to do more themselves. And you can see them going, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. Um, and I can remember working for a company in Australia um, when I was there and, and the boss's ethos was, if you want something, come and knock on my door. And I can remember one of the guys, one of the sales guys going banging on his door and going, I want to be your assistant manager and I want to have a team this big and I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And he went, cool, go out and do this and it will happen. And just this guy was so driven to do it. Um, I don't quite have that in my company. No one's banged on my door yet to say, you know, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. Um, so Actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. No, 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 no. One of them has. Paige, Paige has. No, no, no. Sorry. That's, that, is, that is a lie. Somebody did do that. One of, the, one of our new stars. So yeah. when you say you're sort of helping people, is that where the business incubator thing comes in? Yeah, the business incubation hub. So that's something new that we're, uh, we're going to be launching. It was, it was due to be launching in the next couple of months. I might push it back a little bit in 2020 just so we can get everything kind of back open again. But now is a, now is a really good time for it. So it's got it's got a few different points to it, but is it, the incubation hub is the is the concept is taking it's about investing in the individual as is as, as much about the business. So it's about if somebody has an idea for a business or the, the beginning stages of getting it set up, um, then the incubation hub can support that in, in numerous different ways. So um, you might come up with an idea, for example, whatever industry it might be in and you need support. Some of that will be financial, probably. Um, but I didn't need finance. I didn't need money when I started my business for the prisons. What I really needed, I needed kind of support. If I'd had, this is it, it's exactly what Chris says as well. He says the same thing as what you're saying. People don't need money. Like they might think they do, but what they need is sort of coaching on. When I had money in my first business, what did I do? I spent 10 grand on PR. Yeah. Uh, it, do you know what I mean? It was just. It, in I, I fact, didn't... having no money makes you smarter because then you have to think up alternate ways of doing things, don't you? Rather yeah, than yeah, just yeah. throwing cash. You have to work in different ways so yeah um, quite often what people need is advice they need that pick up a phone i was chatting to somebody the other day who who i'd, who I'd love to be involved in a bit more and they were they're doing like 10 different things and i'm like guys you just need to focus on this and this and this these three things that's it forget everything else mm. just focus on those three things and a year and a half when everything's solid and you're running and it's moving and you're generating good income and you've got some breathing space then you can expand out to these other things you want to do, but don't just do all of this because you'll, you'll lose folks on the middle bit and you'll end up not being able to pay your bills and you won't end up, you just won't make it. And I can see them going through the failure rate. I can, I can see them being a percentage of failure rather than success. Um, but you can't force somebody to listen to you. You can't, you, you just can't is, do it. Is there a particular type of business you're interested in? Not, not particularly. I think it's more about more about the person. There's probably certain businesses we wouldn't necessarily get as involved in, um, but I think it, it depends on the person because we haven't started it yet. I'm yet to have the first business kind of come on board for it. But to be honest, like I say, it's more it's more about the individual because the concept of the incubation hub, the way that I'm going to work it, is we've got really good expertise in the house. We've got people in finance, we've got people in operations, we've got people in sales and marketing. 
Um, we've got people that can deal with things like health and safety and insurance. And obviously, we've got loads of connections through solicitors and accountants and brokers, mm. um, payment solutions, so many people that we can just pull on. Um, and, and that's just people that we have in our own environment. If somebody turned around and said, oh, I really need um, something else, for example, then I would look to my slightly wider market. I would look to my LinkedIn market. I would look to my friends. I would look to different people that I know and sort of go, oh, actually, do you know what? That person needs that. And I know that Ben would be really good at it. Somebody turned around to me and said, I want to start producing like music lessons online. Then I would start thinking about, well, how I don't know a lot about that, but I know people that will. And it's about kind of pulling in and bringing those resources together. Um, so that's the way we would do it. And to be honest, even if we had, and I think this, I, I do believe this will happen down the line, that we will get entrepreneurs like me that knew from a young age they wanted to be entrepreneurs but had no idea what industry or business they wanted to be in so they go and work in different jobs mm. and they have to learn over years and years and years and i did that for probably about 12 13 years maybe um but i've got so many different ideas so many different businesses that i just can't do because i don't have time it's almost a case of if you've got an idea in a business come to us and we'll help you grow it and we'll, we'll incubate it with you and then off you go um, or if you haven't got a business, but you know that's what you want to do, then come and see us and we'll give you a business that you can go up and start and grow. Um, so, yeah, so it's there. And, and, and what we do is we invest into the person and the business. Um, and, we, and, you know, because we're invested into it, it absolutely makes sense for us to want it to achieve. But I think the key thing for me, and this is, this is the, the real bit, is that I don't want somebody to come along and say, I've got this idea and I'd like it to generate... Two hundred thousand pounds a year, so I can live quite comfortably, and I don't want to then sort of be going. No, no, no. You want to generate two million quid a year, so you can live like this. I want to help them achieve their goals, not change their goals to what I want. Mm. Um, I think that's that's the bit that's this real. Um, so they, that's something I'm, I'm quite keen on doing and quite keen on growing. Um, mm. But yeah. So what's your limiting factor then? The what? Sorry. Your limiting factor, like it, it like. Like what holds you back? Time, time, time is probably the killer because it's still, I, I still spend, you know, a hundred hours a week pretty much in my business. Um, and I need to be able to sort of step away from that, at least a percentage of the time. Um, and that's why I restructured it, you know, December, January. So I've got people that can run it. So, okay, here's, here's a question. Cause this is something I think about a lot. How do you draw the line between doing something yourself getting someone else to do it because at the moment i very much i want to learn everything i want to be able to do everything myself not for the long yeah. term but because i want to understand everything and i feel like it will um put me in a better position you know when i end up sort of delegating bits and pieces so it's like i want to learn everything i want to understand i want to understand the accounts the bookkeeping you know the websites web for example yeah, I'm learning my websites, a little bit of code and programming and stuff like that, you know, video editing and, um, you know, the the analytics and the paid pay-per-click stuff. Like, I want to understand it all. It's not, I don't really want to do it all, but I just feel empowered by understanding it all. So where do you, like, I don't know, where do you find that balance between getting someone else to do stuff and doing it yourself? I think it depends on where, where you are and what you're doing. And that was that. That brings on because because I sent a message a little while ago because I saw a post that you did, yeah. Uh, and I've been watching you do your websites um, for a little while, just just obviously seeing you post each day. And I love watching you post each day about what you've learned, and I can see you growing it, growing it. I was thinking to myself, it's like, oh god, man, building websites is a big job, and I I know that because not because I built them, I've done them on Wix, but I know it because my old business partner, that was what his company did. Um, so I've seen it happen, and I understand the language. So everything you talk about, I understand what you're talking about. Wouldn't have a clue how to do it, but I understand mm -hmm. the terminology and I, and I totally get why it costs five, six grand to have websites built mm -hmm. because of the everything that goes into it, just cross browser usage and like, you know, the responsiveness of them. There's just so many things. Um, and I was watching you do this and then you posted a post, you, you posted to say, sod this, I'm fed up building websites, I'm going to get someone else to do it because it, it's just, it's, it makes much more sense for me to pay someone else to do this bit so I can concentrate on this bit. Mm. I remember sending you a message here and that is so like on point. Yeah, right. And, and I was like, it's that bit right there. That's the bit that makes a difference because you, you'd recognize that you can do it, but actually you don't want to do it. And, and that's the key bit. If you don't want to do it. 
yeah, there, there's a point where it's useful to understand it, and then there's a point of diminishing returns where you're spending more and more hours on doing something that you, you somebody else could do, you know. And, and it's about knowing that moment where to sort of pull the yeah. And I, I think that's the individual, and I, I found that really hard, probably one of the hardest things. And um, certainly, my team would say, um, and and certainly the guys that are more connected to me, like day to day, would say that I find it quite hard to let go of things because mm. I think again, it's the nature of the beast. You want to be able to be involved in everything, and you have to you have to build to that point, and then you start gaining trust for yourself to let go and that you, I, I know that my team won't do it as well as me but in some areas but in other areas they do it a lot better can, than me Depends. can it cut both ways like can you can you get yourself in a mess where you've kind of you've got so many moving parts and so many people yeah. doing things that you're actually you've actually backed yourself into a corner of complication um yeah i mean there's, there's so many different uh, pitfalls you can you can fall into i mean this this morning for example so we're just starting to look at reopening so we're starting to look at the ppe requirements so i'm really good like one of one of one of the, the number of things i'm good at is i'm good at going through lots of websites and sourcing really low cost items that we need so i'll, I'll source through and i'll spend a bit of time making sure that we're not overpaying um but that's quite a straightforward job and actually i've got some people that equally as good as that if not better so this morning when i started looking i was like do you know what? i'm not going to do this i'm going to email one of my guys and i'm going to ask them to do it and i asked them to do it and within about 20 minutes and this was at 7 30 this morning um within about 20 minutes he'd sent it back and had the list and i could just go straight on there and i trusted him i didn't even need to source it on the internet and i could just order it and it was done and it took me like five minutes as opposed to a job that might have taken me half an hour to 40 minutes mm -hmm. and i'm doing a lot of those now and i'm passing a lot back out to the team and actually this has probably helped it a little bit because i've been able to go do you know what? i'm not going to do that you've got some time you do that and you figure out what you what you learn is where i've had to learn everything is you're learning things now if you let your team take the reins to start doing those things yes they're going to make some mistakes but they're also going to learn it so next time they'll know exactly what they're doing and your job then becomes making sure that the mistakes they make, they can learn from and are not so catastrophic that it destroys your business. And if you can so, find that balance. So with entrepreneurs, there's all different kinds of characters. And so what, like, who do you look up to? Who's your favorites? Um, I have a real combination, I think. Um, I, I, I do like watching Gary Vee, Gary Vaynerchuk, because I think he's got a real, he's got a really strong why he's got a really strong drive um he's got a really he's been very intelligent he's, he's changed the way modern day entrepreneurship works and he's created an entire generation of people that just want to be influencers like, there's like sixty thousand people that want to be the next gary v um type of stuff and they, they all feel they're going to get there um but at the same time i think sometimes he can be a bit too too softly he's too honey for my liking um, and I go with this honey and vinegar scenario and, and Richard Branson's a bit like that. Whereas you take Alan Sugar or Donald Trump, they're vinegar all over. I mean, Alan Sugar especially is, 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 is really sour. You cross him and bang. Um, whereas Gary Vee is going to be quite, quite sweet. And I, I like to fall somewhere in the middle. Oh, I've never heard that analogy, honey and vinegar. Yeah, that's mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pasta, uh, pesto, I, honey I, and vinegar. I, I, think in fairness, I think in fairness, Gary Vee probably coined it. I, I think he probably did. Yeah. But it is, um, I think he said that his style is very honey. Um, but yeah, you do have the vinegar style. And I, I like to force them in the middle. It depends on the instance where, which way I go. And I, I actually quite like Grant Cardone because although, although it's not the business I'm in, and I don't really have a huge passion to be in the sort of business in, I like the, the realism that he gives um, and, and, and such like that. Um, there's, there's various different, I think it depends on which platform on. I, I see quite a lot from Deborah Mead and on Twitter and I, and I like a lot of her business ethos, but I don't necessarily agree with some of the other bits she puts out. Um, hey, let me tell you about this idea I've been working on. I got like half a dozen different projects and I just rotate around them. Like when, you know, I work on one, when I get a bit fed up with it, I change to another and just go round and round and round and I'm just trying to grow them all. Um, so um, I want to get into property and I've, been, I've, I've started building this property website and the idea is it will have listings, but it will be aimed at property investors. So it'll be like a sourcing 
website and it will have all the figures that you know the return on investment the cost the how much it will cost to refurbish you know the comparables the you know details with the planning permit everything a property investor wants to know and I like the the original reason I wanted to do that is to start sourcing. But then I thought, oh, actually, I can make this into like a website and then other sources can put their stuff on it and it could become a whole thing. So what do you think of that? Yeah, I quite like that. Is there something like that at the moment? Because it's. um... I don't don't know. I haven't seen one. No, I I would imagine you would have heard of it based on what what you've done in terms of with property and with, with other people. But. No, I quite like that idea because like you say, it's got everything kind of in one place and people can see it and it will allow you to attract existing investors that are in the property market, but also, and possibly more importantly, people that would aspire to be able to buy property as an investment, but don't mm. know how to go. It almost takes, it almost gives them the support or it will give them the support to take away about having to learn about all these things because it's there in black and white. Yeah, right, so, right. See, like, my... My brain's probably similar to yours. I always go toward, I always gravitate towards systematizing things. Doesn't matter what I start doing, I could, it could be anything. And immediately I'm thinking, how can I systematize this? How can, how can I, you know, how can I leverage this and scale this and turn it into a, you know? And, and so, you know, it started off like, oh, I could do sourcing and earn a fee, a finder's fee. And then it was like, oh, fuck that. Let's build a system where I can source more, you know? Um, so that's, that's one of the things I'm working on. Yeah, scalability, I think, is key. And that's what I was saying to you about, where, about your <coughs> counting spreadsheets. Yeah. Uh, it, it's great that you've done it that way, but I just don't see how you'll scale out. Ben yeah. Larry will scale it all the way to the moon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> because but what you're doing is you're recreating something that already exists. Um, uh, like, oh, I, I mean, don't know. It's a pain in my ass, though. The, the counting software. I haven't used QuickBooks. I use Zero, and the two are very, the two are very similar. But I've oh. it really quite straightforward. How can you deal with it? C- clicking all over the place on different pages, and well, I still don't find that anymore. Um, um, once once you start once you start scaling, once you get to a point where you know you're, you're drawing in like half a million pounds of income, and you're having to do like quarterly VAT returns, you're having to look at depreciation, you're having to look at your taxes. You you want to know right where you are in terms of balance sheets and P and Ls in the minute on there, you need to do your balances, you need your trial balances, all that kind of stuff. So you can see where your business is right now, where it is tomorrow, where it is in a month, where it is in three months, where it is in six months, the projections. You, I, you haven't to... seen my formulas, Joel. <laughs> I've got formulas for all that. <laughs> You're underestimating Ben Larry's spreadsheets. That's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Um, but yeah, it is about, it's about scalability, like you say, and obviously how you do it. But no, your website, your, 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 um, the property side of things, sounds, sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah yeah that's yeah that's that's what i'm working on um so, well, yeah I, on? well i forgot uh i got a friend called craig and he's got a um a private health clinic where he's got some treatment rooms and he's an osteopath and he rents yeah. his rooms out and stuff and he's he's as busy as he wants to be in terms of working and and he said like ben why don't you do all my marketing you know you take care of that side of things i don't want to do any of that you do that bring in the business and we'll sort of do a joint venture and we're, we're planning to take on new locations. You know, we're going to get the first one up to, he he already owns his own practice. We're going to get that up to, you know, maximum capacity and then look at taking on another one. So that's, um, that, but you know, that's great. That's one, but it's early days, you know, we haven't, you know, COVID and everything. We haven't quite got the ball rolling yet, but I'm going to be doing, you know, the, the video marketing, the paper clear, the website, that side of things. Um, and then mate of mine, uh, John Mags, he went to Chew. I don't know if you yeah, know him. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, John? Yeah, 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 yeah we, we've course. we've we've started filming MMA tutorials, and it's a similar kind of thing. It's a joint venture. Magnol Winford, isn't he? He's got a gym. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he's got a new gym in North Bristol, and we're and um, he's quite well connected. He did MMA for quite a few years, and he knows loads of professional fighters and athletes and stuff like that. And we're going to sort of uh, make the website like a like a hub for sort of MMA tutorials and fitness combat, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, and um, we'll probably have loads of different instructors featured on the site and stuff like that. So, but again, it's the early days. We haven't, it hasn't taken off yet, but um, actually I'll put the website up early. I'll show it to you. Uh, what else? Um, I'm trying to think. What else? I'm gonna... Well, my hem party thing is, you know, just ticks away in the back. That's a nice little business that is. I mean, it doesn't make a fortune, but you know, I've got loads of, models on the books and you know it's a business um so that's that's yeah, dead at the moment there's so many things that i've 
looked at, written down, I've got a long list, I've got a spreadsheet in fairness, um, of uh, business ideas. Um, and yeah. uh, every time I think of something, I just add it to it. Um, yeah. There's loads of different things that are on similar lines to kind of where you create a system where people can feed in, feed in different things. I remember I did it with drones um, when I first, when we first started using drones and I created this genius, absolute beauty of a business. Um, I knew exactly how we can do it. I just didn't have time. So I just didn't even start. Um, what was that for filming? Yeah. And I saw it a few years ago, somebody else did it and they pitched on Dragon's Den, took investment. Oh. And I was sat there and they were talking about it. And as they were pitching, I was like, no, no, you've got your business model wrong. It's wrong. This is not how you do it. Don't do it like this. Don't do it like this. And they pitched it. And then the dragon sat there and I can remember, I can't remember which one it was. And they turned and said, this business model doesn't seem to make sense to us. Surely we better to do it this way. And I sat there going, yes, yes, that makes sense. Oh. Um, and, and, and I was really pleased. And that was kind of that moment where I saw when I was seeing big, big business people kind of going, surely the, this is the way. And I was like, that's my idea. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that was, that was, we were, um, we were doing lots of paddleboard stuff. So we we're going out on the, um, on the, uh, weekends and going to lots of paddleboard events across the country, certainly down the South, down Southwest Cornwall, Devon, that kind of place. Yeah. Um, and drones were, and people had drones, but they weren't, you know, overly accessible. And, and funny enough, I, I knew somebody who, who, who's a very successful business person. He had a drone. He let me borrow it. Yeah. So I was taking it down on the weekends. I was flying it and doing, yeah, um, it was a, a phantom force. I was taking that down and getting good shots of uh, paddleboarders out in the sea and on lakes and stuff uh, like that. And I was like, do you know what? And I, and I started learning about um, the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority regulations about what you had to do to be a, dr a qualified licensed drone pilot. Um, and I started looking into it. And I discovered that there was a huge amount of money to be to be made in terms of doing things like um, uh, going and looking at buildings. So going and, you know, looking at roofs and steeples. Oh, and for like and surveying. Yes, yeah, so literally surveying buildings. Ah. There was a lot to be done there. You could use it for estate agents in terms of for marketing so they can get overviews of big houses. Like I was thinking like big properties. Yeah. Um, and then I found out through just through a connection I had in, in the BBC, I was sort of pitching the idea. I went, oh, do you know what? It's really hard for us because we don't really use drone footage because we don't we don't bring in drone pilots ourselves in BBC. They don't have they didn't have drone pilots. They would try and bring people in, but they found it really hard. Right. And I suddenly realized I, I knew the Civil Aviation Authority had a uh, a group uh, had a list of people that had licenses, and right. you could check if somebody was licensed. So I was like, hold on, I'm just going to build a website, and I'm going to have one section where if you're a pilot, you can sign yourself up and you say the area you're in. And then I'm gonna have another section where people can hire pilots, for whatever they want, sporting events, surveying. So film, drone pilot agency. Whatever, it, it, literally that. And all yeah. I'm gonna do is you connect with us. We send you the pilot that's closest. The pilot goes and does all the footage mm. and then they can upload the footage into the hub and then you can download the footage. And then we've got a connection, you pay us, we pay the pilot, we keep a commission. And it was such a simple model um, and then I and, and and then I went online and believe it or not, I need to double check the URLs, but I, I went on and went, what would be a good name for it? And I was thinking through different names. And I was like, oh, do you know what? something like Sky Blue Media would be great because it's got the word sky, it's got the word blue, it's got the word media. I was like, and it's because it starts with sky, like, you know, it's it's sky. Um, and the URL was there. So I just bought it. I was like, Sky Blue Media, that's it. Mm. Um, and I just didn't have time. I think it was, it was, it must be the same sort of time as the prisoners were starting to, were starting to negotiate the jails. So it went onto the list, went onto the back burner and somebody else did it three, two, three years later, somebody else did it. Right. Um, uh, but they were doing it as a membership scheme. So basically you as a pilot would pay a membership fee. Right. And then as you, and then what would happen is work came in, they would connect you, you would go and do the work and work out the price directly with the customer. Mm. and get paid and they made their money by charging the membership off you right and i was and i was just like no that's the wrong way you need to uh, be take a cut and employ yeah. them yeah right right you need to be the yeah um so yeah there's there's been a few of those different ideas and concepts but it, it self grew you know what it was once you had it built it will just self grow in order to do a deal is there like a, a do you have like a certain percentage or a fixed percentage or does it just depend what it is and uh, what in terms of in, in a in a business? Agreement? Like if you were going to do a joint venture, yeah. Do you have like a, a fixed? No, it just I mean, depends. I, just with, depends. with the business incubation hub, for example, the current model and it, it does change and it is it is a bit individual. 
but the current model in business information hub is you might come up with an idea you'd come to us i'd look at it um, we'd you know agree what kind of support you need what that looks like over a period of time um, and then we would uh, we would have we would invest into for a percentage of the business now that might be as low as two percent it might be as high as 20 percent. it just depends on what's in there really and the challenge i think that that world brings is a lot of people, especially in their first company and potentially their second company. I think people start to understand a bit more in their third business is they go, well, I don't want to give away my business. I don't want to give away a percentage of my business. And my response was, you're not giving away your percentage of your business. You're having investment for it. You're going to get something for it. And yeah. because we're, because we then own a percentage of it, there is a absolutely we're invested in making a success. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. It's an asset, isn't it? Having, having, having and, a business there's, expert there's, on board. There's a big risk to it. I've, I've spoken to a few people and people have gone, this is, this is a crazy idea. What you need to do is you need to tie that entrepreneur down to their future deals. And I'm like, no, because you can't, you can't tie a horse down like that. You can't, you can't do it. You can't own someone's life, can you? you no, can't... It, it just won't work. It's like, got to be comfortable for them, yeah, isn't it? They just won't want to create. You'll kill them. You'll smother them. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. we take the risk that, you know, we might take somebody on, we might work with them for three years, drive it, the business fails, they come up with another idea, they've learned the lessons, and they go off and do it on their own back. Yeah. That, that, that happens. Um, but I'm a strong believer in if you can bring value to someone, then they will continue to see that value even going forward and they will want you to be part of it. See, I'd like to go in the same direction. We're, we're both at different stages in our journey. You're kind of, you know, you're far ahead in terms of what you've achieved and stuff. But I'm kind of just starting out in a way. But I want to position myself as someone that can, you know, be a joint venture business partner and I can bring all, you know, whatever skills and stuff that I can bring to the table, which is what I'm already doing. I mean, you know, I haven't turned them into a success yet, but I'm kind of right at the early stages of doing that. So, you know, further down the line, I, that's, you know, I want to be doing the same thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love working in the jails and, and doing that, but I really want to be able to step off that because there's other people in our organization that do do those jobs better than me. And mm. they're really passionate about doing that. And that's what they want to do. Whereas what I want to do is be able to grow. I want to grow my business to a hundred million over the next 10 years and I've got plans where I'm going four years after that. Where are you so going after? Where are you going forwards years after it? <laughs> I haven't got that. <laughs> <laughs> Public knowledge yet. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so I've got those kind of plans. So that's that's kind of like my my fourteen year plan, if you will, from here, which takes me up to fifty one. Um, mm. So I've I've kind of got that got that mapped out. What I want to do is I want to spend more time working with other people. Um, and helping them to, to grow and achieve it. Because like I say, if, if I'd had somebody, if I'd been able to ruin myself 10 years ago, my first business would have absolutely flown. You know what I find weird, right? People have got all kinds of hobbies. People do all sorts of stuff for fun. You know, people go fishing, you know, knitting, whatever, whatever they're into. And yet, um, like a lot of people find it odd that people like us are into this kind of thing, like business, like, but it's still, it's still creating, isn't it? Like it's, it's no different to painting or sculpting or like you're creating something. It, it's just a business it's just, as opposed to, you know, a, cam a canvas or something. Yeah. I would say we've, we've got it right. I mean, I say go right. I got, I got to be careful sweeping statements. PR company will hate me for it. I'm um, with you. I'm unapologetic about the way I go about things, but I would say we've got it right because People say to me, how, can, how are you always so positive? And I'm like, I'm positive because I enjoy what I do because I don't go to work. I don't have a job. My, my passion is my life. And it's kind of when you speak to people, it's like, what would you like to do all day? Or I'd like to you know, surf all day or I'd like to just you know, draw all day. I'd like to write all day. I've, I've got somebody who's a great writer. She's brilliant. Um, and she's just started writing a novel. And, and I'm sure if I asked her, what would you like to do? I'd love to be an author. I'd love to write all day, but it doesn't pay the bills. Um, and I'm just, I'm like, what my passion is does pay the bills so i'm 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 yeah i'm, I'm very I, I don't use the word lucky um but i guess i'm fortunate that i figured that out young enough in my life to to, to take advantage of it um mm. but i think that's you, that's that's the key thing you got aspirations to be on the telly uh, do you know what i'm not the influencer world i get but then I, there's bits of it I really dislike, and I, I've, you know, I've again been fortunate enough to spend some time with some some really big influencers in the UK. I mean, I, not a huge amount of time, but I've, I've spent time with Alfie Days. I've spent time with with Zoella. 
um, I spent some time with Casper Lee, uh, Morgs, these kind of guys. And, you know, I've been able to just have conversations with them and pick their brains. And I had probably a, a, about an hour long conversation with Alfie Days at two in the morning. And I was just asking about things. And I, I really like what these guys do, but that is their world. That is their job. And they have to pump out content. Mm -hmm. I love that I can put content out and then not do anything for 10 days. Mm. Um, the, the people that follow me might not like it. And earlier when you said, oh, well, you've got this many followers. It's like, have I? I, I, I honestly don't know because I don't check because the number's not important. It's about the value. I'm going to sound a, a little bit too much like Gary Vee here, but to me, it is about giving out that value. Um, I, I'm happy being the center of attention. Um, I'm happy being up there in front of people. I've got no problems with that. I'm happy presenting and those kind of things. What I don't want to do is I wouldn't want to stand on stage or in front of people in that in that world and give them a load of bullshit or give them something that's not real or Actually, doesn't, been, it doesn't get value. You know, recently I've noticed there's a lot of videos and channels online that's kind of like debunking and calling out like get rich quick gurus and stuff. Have you yeah. seen any of that stuff? No, I, I have seen bits of it. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I've been quite enjoying that, you know, because it's nice to because there is a lot of bullshit artists that 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 will sell courses and they'll encourage their, um, you know, their attendees to just put a five grand course on a credit card. And, you know, there is a lot of scammers and and um, it's nice to see them getting called out, to be honest. Yeah, so for, so for me, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. I, I have come up with, you know, we did look at doing a TV series called something like The Jail, where it followed us around and very much a fly on the wall. Um, I mm. kind of think, you know, I, I love social media. I really do. I'm quite passionate about it. And, and I really wanted to get into TikTok. But then I looked at TikTok. I was like, you know what? The way TikTok works, what it's all about, is not really me. It's not what I do. I don't dance around in that way. And I, I wouldn't create videos like that generally as the norm. Mm. So I don't want to force it because it's not me. Um, but then I've got people in my team who love that. So they're all over it. So I'm like, cool, if you guys can plug the prison, happy days. Um, I was I was really interested in that. So uh, it, it was a Gary V um, episode and um, he was talking about, uh, somebody asked him about um, his support network, like his close team that do his media. Um, and, and he's got 21 people that do his media just around him, just the Gary V media, 21 Fucking people. Fucking hell. So when you think about it, suddenly you can understand why he's all over TikTok, all over Instagram, all over Facebook. All yeah, because he ain't doing it. <laughs> because he's got 21 people to do it. Like, you know I mean, and, and, and that's how he's done it. And he he just he just does his stuff. He just does his thing all day, every day. And all these people capture yeah. everything and bang out they go. Um, that's and that's nuts, isn't I it? love the idea of it. Um, wow. I, love that. I was like, yeah, you know, I've had 21 people following me. Would I get more content? Would I get more followers? Yes. But the reason I would is because I believe that what I talk about has value and therefore it will, it will connect with people, but it won't connect yeah. with everyone. It won't have value to everyone. Um, yeah. But it's, so it's about, it's about keeping it kind of, kind of. How real. many people works for Gary V now? Like I haven't followed him for a little while. Thousands really houses with, with their with their other offices and stuff like that but they're they're, they're a different level they're at, they're at an investment level now so once you start scaling like that you know it is it, it, it can go quite quick and um mm. i was chatting to my my mechanic a few weeks ago um a couple of months in furnace and he was saying um he was saying because i don't how, how do you do it because he goes i i find it really hard that when i when somebody doesn't pay me a 30 quid bill or a 70 quid bill or a hundred quid bill, I need that money to pay my bills and live. How do you get beyond that point? And he was asking me, he goes, cause you've done it. You've got beyond that point. How do you get beyond that point? I said, you don't. I was like that, that still exists in my world. You just have to add some zeros. So I was like, so where are you talking about a 70 pound bill? I might have a 700 pound bill or a 7,000 pound bill or a 10,000 pound bill that I'm waiting for someone to pay so I can pay out. So, and you you've got two employees to pay and i've got 40 so it just it just keeps scaling um and 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 that's kind of the reality of it um in, in unless you're an amazon <laughs> in which case you just you know you, there are companies obviously that have not but it's, it's investment money isn't it yeah right right so wow. it, it, that that's the next thing for me is is learning the exciting piece of, of growing from a company that does 1.2 1.3 million to 10 million and then up to 100 million and i've got i've got a plan a strategy for it so I'm, I'm have you got a desire to sell businesses as well yeah i, th 
think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to do it. I think, you know, having an exit strategy is a smart idea. Um, I wouldn't, I, 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 I prefer to, well, I say I prefer to, um, it's not something I've done masses. I've only sold one company and I had to because it was going under. Um, in the sense of, yes, it's, it's, it's good to have an exit strategy, but if you don't need to, why would you? There's got to be a reasoning behind it. Um, mm. But I do think, you know, lots of people potentially just look at businesses and call entrepreneurs it's about going in, try and do something. And lots of people will stop becoming entrepreneurs out the back of this because it's not going to be cool anymore. It's just going to be bloody hard work. Um, and there's no security entrepreneurship. I'm not furloughed. A few of my team aren't furloughed. Um, you know, there's, I know you're in a similar situation from a self-employed perspective. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it won't be as cool going forward. What's your dream car? Dream car. Um, God, you know, what? I'm not, I'm not a massive kind of, I'm not a huge person in kind of like, I'd, I'd want to have these cars and these cars. I do like sports cars. I'm not going to lie, but I just don't ever see me spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on a car. You're not a car guy. No, I, 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 I don't. Have any functional. More. Yeah, I used to have a Peugeot 406. We used to have a, a Mazda Bongo camper van, and I'd drive to meetings like that. Like, it doesn't bother me. And it's the same with what you wear when you go to to meetings and stuff. I've, you know, whether you wear a nice suit and dress really smart, or whether you, you know, you wear jeans and a polo, I'm like you're going to get the same value from me. You'll probably get more value when I feel more comfortable. Um, mm. But yeah, I don't, I don't. Can you see me doing that, Ems, car-wise? I probably will through a midlife crisis. I'll probably go through a midlife crisis. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is Emma? Does she go into the prison? I presume Emma can hear me. Can she? I can. Yeah, yeah. Does she? Does she go to work? Like, or, or is she with the kids most of the time? Or like, is she involved well, in the business? Emma does. Emma does ninety-eight percent of the home educating with the kids. Right. Ninety-eight. Uh, yeah. I Who do does she, the other two? I do. <laughs> <laughs> teach him to swear and fight um uh no emma, emma is but she's she's very much she was for the first three years she was in the business every day pretty much same hours i was um and then two years ago uh because we, we took our kids out of school home educating them it was just too much to home educate and emma was probably working 70 hours a week and trying to home educate and we, we just made a decision school or, or work so emma took a step out from the day-to-day -day role and we employed somebody else to take over Emma's role, which was the marketing media director. Um, so somebody else took over that. And Emma very much now works through the evenings. Um, so she'll, kids will go to bed. Um, I mean, our day normally will look something along the lines of, we'll get up, Emma will go for a run at 6.30. I'll get up and start work. Kids are up, Emma home educates with them. I work through the day. I go for a run around five-ish. Um, Kids will have dinner, we'll put the kids to bed, kids go to bed, I come back to work, and Emma starts work. And then we'll do that till maybe one in the morning. Um, so you've got a routine? Well, it fluctuates. And on the weekends, we tend, on Friday, Saturday nights, we tend not to work. We tend to sort of sit in front of the TV and, and watch TV and stuff like that and chill. Yeah. And drink. Joel, you know what we should do? We should ask the listeners if they've got any questions. So I've got my phone <laughs> for the live stream. There's very few of them in now. It's got too late. We do, okay. I, I wanna, that's why I want to do the business meetings earlier, and I've talked more too much about me, and 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 not the other way around. Talks about you. That's uh, all right. I like I, I like asking questions. Right? Is if anybody's listening to this, do you have any questions for myself or Joel? Well, what should pop up? What 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 I will say? I'm waiting for these things to come in. Um, is so yeah, I've got I've got a plan to grow the business up to up to 100 million over the next 10 years. Um, and then after that, I'm going to look at um, starting to move more. At the moment, anyway, I might change, but I'm going to start to move more into, into a political mindset, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me about this. You want to be prime minister. See, I yeah. find that a bit weird. Like, yeah. everything else makes sense, but I don't understand why you'd want to be prime minister. What's that about? I think I'd be really good at it. Okay. I You're honestly, not raising my taxes, are you, Joel? No, I honestly believe I'd be really good at it because I would, <laughs> sit, I would sit so in the middle that I would look to try and benefit both ends. And because I I would have got to a point by that stage when I would have achieved what I wanted to achieve in business, yeah. I would have achieved what I needed to achieve financially. So I'm not driven by finance. I won't be driven by popularity because I'm not. Um, my kids will have left home, so they'll, they'll be fine. I'll be quite comfortable and I'll have the time and the knowledge 
to be able to apply it. And for me, the idea then is I can spend my 50s really kind of giving back to the country that allowed me to create what I've created. So that's the theory. Um, What's the first law you'd pass? Oh, Christ knows. Um, but by the time we get that far, by the time we get there, so much politics will have changed. Um, <laughs> sorry, I see. Um, so much of the politics will have changed. That a lot of it will be driven by influencers. Lots of people will be voting based on who Joey Essex tells them to vote for. It won't be Joey Essex, it'll be somebody new, but you know, it's going to become a scary world. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the in- influence influence and power has shifted isn't it with okay so what what year are you gonna be launching uh, your i don't know about 14 about 14 years i think okay 51, about 51 oh, okay think i'll look at it i uh, see but we'll see lots of people lots of people will laugh about my parents included but you know i think that's the beautiful thing about having goals and having aspirations and having you know Kind you're of, not joking about that then you're serious no, no, i'm deadly serious yeah okay. I'm deadly serious. a lot will have to happen in the meantime because people will sit there again well you can't because if you sit on the fence you've got to be a conservative candidate or a, or a labor candidate because that's that's how it works and like that 14 years is a long time a lot can happen in 14 years look at what's happened in the last two months three months four months mm-hmm. do you know what i mean a lot can happen mm-hmm. um and i'm not a particular big fan donald trump you know, I don't, I don't watch enough to really have a huge. Oh come on, he's play. glorious. <laughs> I know, I know you do. Um, I, I don't really have too much of an opinion on him either way. But you know, he's, he's what he's achieved. Like, yeah, it is, it is fascinating to watch. And if, if Arnie can become a governor and he can become president, you know, you've got to argue anything's possible. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, you could do it if you wanted to. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no question. Yeah. I'd, Put it this way, I think I'd be better than a lot of the bloody people we have had. I think, oh. I think I'd be better than Boris. I think I'd definitely be better than Corbyn. I think I'd be better than May. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I could do it. So, so how does it work? Like, do you have to first, would you first start, like, campaigning locally on a local level, or will you just, like, go straight I'm for it? Big job, mate. Okay. <laughs> You've got more in Trump. you got more in common yeah. than Trump than yeah. you'd no, like I, to admit. I, do you know what? I'm not. I'm not doing it that way because it just take. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know. It's it's the same thing. as the bank manager said to me when I sat with him. I said, "Look, I'm going to get the business from where we are now to 100 million." He went, "Okay, can you talk me through how you're going to do that over the next 10 years?" And I went, "Yeah, I'm going to make another 99 million." <laughs> and he literally went, "What kind of answer is that?" And I was like, "Well, it's the real answer. I'm going to make 99 million more." <laughs> Plus the one million, million there's a hundred million. Like you work in a bank, mate. Uh, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, but how are you going to do it?" I was like, "I don't know." So, like, but I didn't know how I was going to make my first million out of it. But you know, yeah. <laughs> um, so no, normal people don't think like that, and that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the entrepreneurial one. Yeah. Uh, sorry, somebody somebody has asked the what type of people uh, do I look for working in the prison. Um, if, if you were going to employ somebody, Ben, what sort of person would you look for? One that showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good start. That'd be, I suppose, friendly, friendly. I if, don't if, know. if you're going to employ somebody in like one of one of your businesses or anything you're going to do, somebody to come and work with you, what would you what would you look for? Oh, I, sp- I suppose um, somebody who's kind of honest and like what you see is what you get, and you don't you don't have to double guess them and yeah. like they're straight talking that kind of thing. I suppose it depends on what role, doesn't it? But it, it does, yeah. Um, I mean, personal attributes, I always look for passion. They've got to be passionate about it. They've got to have drive um, and enthusiasm and excitement. And, and for me, those are kind of the key personal attributes. And funny enough, in my company, I'm no longer allowed to interview candidates. Why is that? Um, the senior team stopped me doing it about a, about a year ago. About, about a year ago. Um, uh, I, I can be quite, the trouble is what I do is I look at the person so that you could have two people, one's really qualified for the role, but might not be particularly driven or particularly, they might not have loads of panache about them or loads of excitement, perfectly capable of doing the role and very qualified. But the other person who could be less qualified is just that there's, there's a bounce to them. And I'd be like, that's the person because that's how we want our company. 
Um, and the trouble is you employ too many people like that, it does start to have a, have, have a balance. So what right. we now do is that um, when we employ somebody, whoever the manager is going to be, will do the interview along with somebody else. They'll do the formalized interviews, they'll do the formalized exercises. And then um, depending on the level of, of, of they're going to work at, they will then come and have a coffee with me afterwards and we'll just have a chat. Right. Um, and you and have then, the final say, do you? No, no, they do. Uh, okay. It always goes down to a vote. It's always, there's always an odd number. And uh, it will get, we'll, we'll discuss it. And if there's a, a difference of opinion, then there'll be a vote. Oh. And it's done like that. I, it's very rare that I would um, override an opinion. Because if you do that, you're then not giving your managers, you're not letting them do their job. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I really try not to do that. So, um, but what if they were really nervous in the interview? So I said, what if they were really nervous in the interview? That's why we do it that way because you can be really nervous in front of um, when you're doing the presentation pieces. And when we when we recently advertised for um, the salesperson, they'd do yeah. sales presentations and they they had a ten minute presentation which they had to prepare beforehand. Then they had questions and answers with the marketing the sales and marketing director and the operations director. Mm -hmm. um, they met the finance director, so that's all kind of kind of very much sort of blue collar style. And then they came down to the restaurant and I just sat and had a chat with them for 10 minutes and a coffee. Mm. Um, and then we, we get different angles and um, I get to explain about what the business works like, the reality of it and, and what we look for. And I get to find out about the real person. So, um, yeah, that's how we kind of go about it. Mm, OK, yeah, I've never in, I've never had a business where I've employed people. Well, I say that I, I mean, I, I use models for hem parties. And actually, now I think about it, it's interesting because. You, you do get this thing where you get guys that are, they look the part, you know, they got the muscles and the abs and they're good looking and all that. And I, I speak on the phone to them before I send them to a, cause I don't want to be giving. That's why you say they have to turn up because obviously you have, you have models that I was thinking. Oh yeah. Like, why, why, like, why, why, like, like I, cause I don't have that, but it's a different industry. See, see, they're not on the payroll. You know, I just pay them on yeah. a job basis. I don't think I'm, I'm not an employer. I don't think don't I'm a You're screwed. You got, you got, oh yeah, yeah. You got hands that could be after blood. Yeah, that, but it's, it's interesting, actually, because I always choose the nice guys that are personable and kind of intelligent and they can hold a conversation and they're polite and civilized and that kind of thing. I prefer that. They, they don't have to, you know, I don't care how good looking they are, really, as long because because that's 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 what the girls want. You don't have to be the best. And you, sometimes you get these really good looking guys that are just knuckle draggers. They're just dummies, you know, yeah. and it's, it's no good because it. it it's no good, you know, it's no good. So obviously I did, you want both, but I prefer the nice guy every time. And it's weird, like, it's, guys seem to fall into one or two categories. They're either one or the other. They're either a total dummy or or they're just like a real, real, real nice, nice guy. It's amazing, actually, how many hem party guys are just really nice blokes. You know, people like me, they're just normal guys. They're just doing it for fun, just to make a bit of extra money, whatever weekends and stuff in the evenings yeah they're, they're just normal nice people so my my roster is sort of filled with those kind of guys you know um, well, i suppose you'll be able to you must be able to get the hen parties back when you start easing lockdown because they can people can social distance still doing something like that yeah i guess so i mean i don't know i hope so yeah i mean i'm reliant on the you know the government handouts at the moment i mean and, I, and the way i've just dealt with the whole thing is i've just got my head down being productive doing websites you know laying foundations and yeah. stuff i haven't even thought about the hem party stuff because there's there's nothing i can do about it at the moment so you know. yeah that's that's what i want to do is 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 it's spend more time kind of being able to drop in the ideas i was saying to you the other day but i don't want to i don't have the time to or i don't actually that's a lie it's not that i don't have time i don't want to give the time to drive them forwards myself like so i'm quite I, I want to do things like the business meeting and that's actually quite what we're doing now is quite a straightforward model for me to do because i can go onto linkedin and i can just grab people off which should be quite straightforward and plan out the questions and interview people and we'll do you know probably 40 minutes how do you want to do it do you want it to sit down in the studio or are you going to do it no, over? I, I think i'll do it online like this i think i'll very much do yeah. it like this and, and by and large i think i'll do it live because i think that's that's more exciting and i'll pick a time that kind of works yeah. I'll do it the, same, the same time every week so it's kind of almost like a scheduled episode so it is more fun when it's live isn't it because you yeah. know people are watching yeah. it feels so yeah. it's kind of like 7 30 every week um you know it'll be the business meeting um and off we go and 
and, and and that's quite straightforward. I can do that. That's easy enough. And just just finding the people, and I'll, I'll try and find different people from different businesses and, and such like that, and, and throw in different different things to make it exciting. So it's so it's fun. Um, and then I'd love to do the. Oh, I've got this great hashtag. I think it's a great hashtag. <laughs> it's join Joel. Um, and oh, I want I want to kind of do something with that at some point down the lines. Whether that's just a twenty minute live that I do once a week, where people can just ping in and ask me questions live. Um, so I think that's 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 quite good fun to do. Is this the first join Joel? I, I think this is the first. I don't know if this this might be. I've tagged it as the business meeting, but I think this might be the first join Joel. I think it might be right. join Joel. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure. The bit the business meeting is is a bit more structured and a bit more yeah. kind of on point, and it's you know thirty minutes and off it goes. Um, right. Whereas I think join Joel is a bit more fluid and it just kind of develops with it right. where it is. Um, but I love connecting with people. I, I, I really enjoy when we do the lives at the prison. I really enjoy um, having the comments coming through from people and connecting back with those and doing the presenting piece. It's all those sorts of things. Um, and then, yeah, I, I want to get the incubation hub going. So I've, I've, I've got it planned. I just haven't got it ready to, well, kind of is ready to launch, but it's about time. COVID's kind of slowed it down. Mm. But actually, now is probably the best time to do it. And then I've got the investment portal. So we've got Campbell Group Investments, which basically is a, just a cold hard investment company. Um, right. You're, you need money um, for a business, then you, you know, we can invest in it through that channel. Um, mm. But it's much more of a standard business loan kind of kind of model. Um, right. Or an investment for you know for a percentage. Um, whereas the incubation hub, I think, is more fun. Um, and then I've got the social media hub, which will start, um, I don't know, again, later 2020. Some things have slowed down um, mm. and they've slowed down because because of what's happened with COVID. I've jumped in. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll just see the comment. Um, I've jumped back into the business day to day to support the managers um, and support the teams to get us through this because obviously we, we, we all need to do that. Um, mm. So once we're back on our back running and i can step back out of it i can start working on those things so, yeah. yeah oh wicked well there's um i'm a little bit conscious of time because um... yeah no I've, i'm gonna have to head on because we've been we've gone for nearly just over an hour mate an hour and 20 minutes yeah, yeah. But it has been good to catch up because we've we spoken for ages it's just messaging back and forth through facebook yeah um, funny enough we're, do... gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna rebuild our websites soon okay uh, we're gonna um we used to have somebody who did it in-house um, but we're going to outsource it and um, have the, have them completely rebuilt. Three websites completely redone. Okay. Okay. So, cool. I'm sure I'll do some bits and bobs for you at some point. Yeah, I, I, I certainly think there's, there's there's stuff in there. But I I, I do enjoy watching yeah the the bits you're doing and seeing what you're doing. And, and what I love is you've got that true entrepreneurial piece of just that that drive. No one's going to say to you and and get you to change your mind from from what you're doing. Mm. Um, I think that's it. You've got to go against, you, you go against the grain. This is just the natural way. That's what innovation is. Yeah, um, doing, yeah. It's doing it different. Well, let's let's see if we can make twenty twenty um, a great success. You know, despite all this, it's, it's just bouncing back. Bouncing back is going to be the key thing. Um, mm. So yeah, we'll sort of see how that how that runs. I think my live drops yeah. off. Oh, no, it's no. no, sorry, I, I, I went on to a different tab. I don't know how to work technology. What are you talking about? I ran a technology company. I got to <laughs> um, but, mate, I'll let you go on. And then, um, yeah, we'll catch up again at some point over the next few weeks. All right, Joel. Awesome. Well, we reopen, to you. We'll get you up to the jail. All right. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to come see it. Sound. All, All right. right. No worries, man. Catch I'll you. Cheers. You Take care. Bye. Bye. Cool. That is me done for the first time. That is not quite how I was going to do the normal first business meeting. I wasn't quite sure if that was... The business meeting or join Joel and, and, and hopefully you, you heard if you're still watching the difference between the two the two different styles so the business meeting is very much about speaking to people in business and what they're doing and their companies and what they're going through and their ethos and the challenges and the trials and the tribulations and also the positives they face and I want to do that sort of weekly for like half an hour with different business people all over the world um, and then join Joel is much more a sort of a 20 minute kind of 30 minute just a live where you can just jump in and just ping stuff at me and I'll answer it. Um, and this was kind of a bit of a hybrid of the two. So um, I'm going to refine those and get back. Hopefully you're coming to watch us on the live tomorrow. Uh, Shrewsbury Prison, 8.30. I think it's 8.30, yeah. Shrewsbury Prison, 8.30 tomorrow and Saturday. They're going to be really good. 
we're changing it up so very excited about that um, and hopefully we'll see you there for friday and for saturday and then for wednesday next week um we've got uh, we've got graham officer goodwin who's going to do us a live guided tour from the prison he's amazing it's one you definitely don't want to miss um he is absolutely the best and you will see why the bbc rates Shrewsbury prison as the number six dark tourism destination in the world because of people like graham and because of the team that we have there and what they provide so that's me i'm going to try and figure out how to turn this off um and then <laughs> that's it and um obviously i'll do some more stuff over the coming days so yeah. i still need to figure out how to turn this off um, let me figure out how to turn off the live. It's very different turning off the live from this. There we go. Stop live stream. Right. Cheers, guys. Laters.